What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, February 26th, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, and I just ate a clementine. I just want you to know that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, there's energy inside me, the power of the sun in the palm of my hand. My co-host for today, of course, is the future class of video games. Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. So is it j- just anything you consume gives you energy? I think that's how food works, yeah. But okay. it did give me a boost so much that I pluralized my name, if you noticed there, the front of Greg's I, I Miller. <laughs> no, yeah, you seem like you're on a, another Friday, episode everybody. This Can we just, you know, it's the second show of the day and it's 10 in the morning. Let's just get through it, all right. I'm glad you have this much energy to kind of balance me out because, Greg, I've been active <laughs> over the last 12 hours. Well, it's funny because, yeah, no, no, I would, this, when you were late to the morning meeting, because we had a meeting already today, too, I was like, oh, yeah, Blessing, he's probably tired from the Pokemon thing this morning. And Nick goes, he played Warzone with us till midnight. I was like, oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, no, last night. I legit we watched uh demolition man which was a great time i was very impressed and very blown away by how good that movie is great movie it is a movie that feels like it, it like it is very much of a different era right like it's mm-hmm. a 90s movie but it's sure. the 90s depiction of the future which is very fascinating because it is a very weird f- future that they're trying sure. to depict in that movie love what'd it. you think especially because they got they got so much stuff right what i think of what now what'd you think of sex oh man I, I i'm jealous you oh, know like sucks. they haven't figured it out you know, they got to figure it out. <laughs> no, we don't need this f- gross, disgusting fluid exchange. Let's just have sure. sex with our minds. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that was a very inventive thing. But I went I went from doing the Demolition Man uh, watch along at like 7 or so. Went straight into playing Warzone with Nick and Fran up until midnight. And then watched WandaVision. Went to bed. <sighs> woke up at 6. Re- reacted to Pokemon. And it's been such a fantastic last 12, I guess 15 hours at the po- at this point. That's right. It has blessed, and we have a lot to cover and recap for you, ladies and gentlemen. On top of that, we want to talk about are we getting a PS5 storage solution soon? Are we getting an open-world Pokemon game? And is PlayStation's Japan studio shutting down? It's time to cover all that and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. Feel like that man the clementine has me overloaded you remember <laughs> remember in avengers when iron man got struck by thor's lightning and then he like 900 percent man that's where i'm at right yeah, now we're operating Greggy, let's we, go brr, 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 you know what i mean that's where we're at right now uh kind of funny games deal you know the fucking show you're watching it uh, if you want to be part of it, go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. You can give us your questions, your comments, your concerns, everything under the daily video game sun. Of course, that's not all. On patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, you can get each and every episode of the show ad-free. Plus, you can get it with the post show we do each and every weekday. However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, no big deal. You can watch us record the show live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Just like Denny Blanco is, Jay Shah 21 is, and Unsung Spartan is. Uh, remember, if you're watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, and listen. Listening on podcast services around the globe each and every weekday. Housekeeping for you. Yes, there was a PlayStation showcase yesterday, or PlayStation the state of play yesterday. Yes, there was a Pokemon Direct this morning. We will recap those today. But if you want to watch along live with the crew or what was live, you can go get the reactions on youtube.com slash kinda funny games. Both are up. But at least Sony's has already been claimed by Sony, so they're making sure they get all the money from it when you watch it. But no big deal. Go watch the reactions. Have a good time. Also in housekeeping, did you know that kind of funny best friend Belinda Garcia wrote her first video game, ladies yeah. and gentlemen? That's right. Stonefly was announced today. Belinda worked on it, and you should go check it out at twitter.com slash stoneflygame. It's from Flight School, the folks that did Creature in the Well and Island Time VR, where I was Carl the Crab, and it looks sick as hell. I got to do a hands-off demo of it. Really liked what I saw. Barrett, right on top of it with a trailer right here for it. Uh, you're in this nature world. You're, you have these mini mechs, and you go out into the world to explore fight off bugs uh, it seems like it's all about chill exploration and i cannot wait for it it's launching sometime later this summer uh, congratulations to of course flight school but belinda garcia more importantly yeah. right now kind of funny best friend making the dreams come true out there me. also shout out to adam adam does the art for this and adam is an incredible See, now artist. you're doing the thing well we know everyone at flight school yes adam Bo. you know i mean because i love working on it too we gotta go you i love get out the, the most but also adam's really wow good. and oh, Bo. That's, no you just said it i man. can rank just... them if you want <laughs> it goes belinda please, adam Bo. please don't rank wow <laughs> damn I can keep going please please never rank people, right please. under oh my god i didn't I expect that that's harsh that's harsh i don't like that one i'm sorry adam 
It's okay. I mean, everybody is accepting of it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, remember the Wild Aces uh, play the Zippers tomorrow. You can get your coverage start at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time, twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Yes, we own a football team, and yes, you can come call the plays with us. Uh, again, twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Graham of Legend, David Mintel, Trent Berry, Blackjack, Louise Aguiar, a.k.a. at Bit Louise, at 8 Louise. I feel like every day, I screw up something in Louise's name. Because, of course, Aguiar, I, I, we wrote to him. You know, we d- discussed it on the show. He was great, did exactly what I wanted, tweeted about it. Then the na- I, we got the name right from there on out. But then every, I get, for some reason, it gets clunky here for me. You know what I mean? And I want to apologize, Aguiar? Louise. Because I always say Aguiar. 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 I can go back Aguiar. to the, I can go back to 8-Bit. Oh, no, it's going to be buried. No, I thought I had her. I don't know. We asked a long, long time ago about it. You say Aguiar? I, oh. I say, I'd say Aguiar. But you might, you might, I mean, you might have it right. I've never asked Luis about how to say his last name. Well, it's because he just, said I it was like, like I have a natural talent for saying names. Oof, I definitely know that's not true. And I don't get me wrong. I'm never one to throw stones from my glass house of mispronunciations, but I, I don't Aguiar. believe that for one second. Aguiar. I mean, we both. James right. Davis, a.k.a. at James Davis makes in the nanobiologist. Uh, yeah, see, okay. 8-Bit Luis is right there. Aguiar. I was nailing it. Aguiar. Okay, I'll give it to you. You so then it. you should apologize, Wes. I'll step uh, back. You have Louise, to apologize for like 90% of the shows. Please, uh, Mr. Aguiar, I apologize for mispronouncing your name. And also, if I've ever mispronounced anybody's name in the show, which I'm sure I have, you also get my apologies. <laughs> in the chat, uh, Daniel Savvy says, it can't be as bad as you butchering og rotten potatoes. <laughs> Wait, that was you that did that, though. Fuck! God damn it. Yeah. No, I say it right. Og rotten. No, Don't I say Jenna it the best pa- way. Jenna agrees with me. Oh, gratin. Hey, oh, gratin. Uh, j'aime appeal. My name is Jean-Vive Miller. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm the nanobiologist. Miller? Yeah, well, I mean, in this one, I was just doing my, my you know, French accent. You know, French oh, okay. Canadian accent. Okay. Tabanak. Uh, today, we're brought to you by Brooklyn and Burrow and Logitech, but I'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for a lot of news. We got six items on the Roper Report. Up doesn't as i said of course there's both a pokemon press conference there's a playstation press conference those reactions are up we will recap them here but i wanted to start you with more of the breaking news from today if you will uh we're gonna start here then right with our first of many playstation stories it looks like there is finally going to be expandable storage for the playstation 5 coming this summer we start at bloomberg we're not jason trier instead uh takashi Mochizuki writes, Sony Corp is preparing to open up its PlayStation 5 for internal storage updates this summer, upgrades this summer, lifting a bottleneck that prevents gamers from having more than a few marquee games on their console at one time, people briefed on the plan said. Adding support for additional drives will be enabled with a firmware update that also unlocks higher cooling fan speeds to ensure the console doesn't overheat, the people said. Asking not to be named because the plans are not yet public. The PlayStation 5 comes with a custom solid-state drive with around 667 gigabytes available for storing games, apps, and media. At a time when the latest Call of Duty game needs 133 gigabytes of installation space and most major titles take up at least 40 gigabytes each. Sony's latest console has a customized architecture that accelerates loading and processing times, but makes it impractical, impractical to plug in an external hard drive, the typical way gamers add storage. Such... A drive can only be used for older PS4 games. After the planned firmware upgrade, players need to only take the plastic cover off their PS5 and attach a new storage unit to address the current limitations. Quote, as previously announced, we are working to enable M.2 SSD storage expansion for the PlayStation 5. The timing has not been announced and details will be shared later, a Sony Sperks person said. Blessing at Ioye Jr. The Clementine still has me overloaded with energy. Mm. But here we are. Talking about summer for this expandable storage solution. Did you expect it to take this long? Yes. I mean, th- this is late in the grand scheme of things. This should have been available at launch. But if you would ask me, hey, when do you think Sony might have a solution? I'd probably say summer. I think this lines up. Because it takes time to figure th- these things out. You figure, I-, I know we've talked about this before, but I'm sure they had some sort of order order of operations in which certain things need, need to get done and yeah. figuring out expandable storage for them was probably a thing of hey this is a known shippable thing that we can get out and over over the course of the next season we will figure this out uh and so for this article pointing pointing towards summer i think that lines up 
I believe it because I believe this has to be a priority for them because it is ridiculous that there's still no <laughs> expandable storage uh, for the PS5. When we announced, when, when it all got announced uh, and they said they were going to do this, I was like, great, I'll probably buy it, you know, when it could. Because this is as early as Mark Cerny's presentations, right? I thought when we were talking about that way back in the spring that that meant when this unit shipped, there would be at least one drive on the market that PlayStation was saying, we should go get that and you should go put it in. I expected it to be outrageously expensive, but I expected there to be the option. The fact that there wasn't at launch initially to me was very much a, oh, okay, well, you'll get to when you get to it, no big deal. And then I was shocked as someone who operates pr primarily in the digital space, I, and I've been doing that as, for as long as I can with as many titles as I can, how quickly the PlayStation 5 hard drive did fill up. And how quickly it was like, well, I was hoping to get back to this eventually, but I'm going to delete it and get rid of it. And again, it's, you know, woe is me as always. We talk about how great the internet speeds are in San Francisco and how, you know, data caps don't really matter. And so, I mean, I, you know, when I'm not, I, you know, I wasn't ready to play Borderlands on PS5 yet, so I bounced it. And then, you know, a couple of weeks ago when I wanted to, I downloaded it back and had it ready to go. But when you start talking about getting in the way of your consumer spending, getting in the way of what games are in 2021 with the amount of games as a service or even just games that are going to get DLC, that are going to get updates that you'd rather just keep on the hard drive for when that big update comes to, you start to see what a problem this is and as Bloomberg talks about it, what a bottleneck it is. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous, especially for Call of Duty. I know the, the article mentions, right, that the latest Call of Duty game is 133 gig gigabytes. I think a thing that is compounded with the problem of there being no expandable SSD storage at launch is, is also the problem of, right now, the PS5 doesn't entirely play all too well with external external hard drives. And so, so if you're annoying. playing... Yeah, it's, it's so annoying. There, there's the thing of every time I shut down my PS5, it doesn't disconnect the hard drive doesn't disconnect the right way and so when i boot back up it tells me that i have to repair uh and that should be a thing that happens automatically if i turn off my ps5 it should automatically go through those steps to disconnect that thing the right way so that's the thing i don't like i also don't like that a lot of times games either crash or things go wrong in unforeseen ways and with that you know call of duty black ops cold war large large file size call of duty warzone also a very large file size and that is a ps4 game that i have on an external hard drive and yeah. if we're talking about space if I if right now playing my, playing War, Warzone off of an external hard drive kind of sucks because I do have a lot of issues that pop up with that external hard drive storage specifically for Warzone. I don't know if that's a thing that's unique to me or a thing that many people experience, but Wait. either way, it's there. What's fascinating is like you, your storage drive issues are different than my storage drive issues, which for me are that, you know, when the games get updated, PS4 games get updates, the PlayStation 5 it, it sees the game on the external hard drive, but doesn't understand to update the game there. So every time I turn on a, a it, it, when I was playing Cardo, it was that thing as I was playing off the external hard drive and every time I turned it on to be bring the air message of can not install this update, can not install this update for Cardo. And finally, when I moved it to the PS5 locally, it was able to install no problem. But now mm -hmm. every time I turn on to play anything else, I see that there was a dreams update and that dreams update pings all the time trying yep, to get me I to get do it. I get the same it. thing. And it's like, and it's ugh. ridiculous. And like, yeah. and you know, to to um, round out my Call of Duty point, right? Like, my the the big solution for me with Call of Duty Warzone, since I'm playing it more and more now, is the big solution for me there would be to transfer that uh, that file to my SSD. But if we're talking about playing both Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and, and Call of Duty Warzone, which plenty mm -hmm. of people do, you know, me included, like, I would be nice to be able to go back and forth between those games. That is hundreds of gigabyte size for a, uh, an internal hard drive, an SSD hard drive that is 600, oh, a bit over 600 gigabytes. That is like a third of hard drive space just on totally. Call of Duty. And that is ridiculous. And that is a thing that if that wasn't a priority for them towards launch, it has to be a priority for them now because I'm sure they have to look around and see that people are uh, being frustrated with how this thing is panning out. Uh, it's worth pointing out it, uh, what, it was a news story from yesterday that almost made the Roper Report but we were already so inundated with stuff I let it fly but here that we're having this conversation yesterday uh, at IGN.com Jordan Oleman reported a 500 gigabyte PS4 may no longer be able to fit Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and Warzone uh, Activision has said that players with a 500, PS, 500 gigabyte PS4 may need to make room if they wish to have a fully updated versions of these games so, uh, in the post in the Call of Duty blog the franchise publisher wrote those who own a standard PS4 with a default hard drive of 500 gigabytes may need to make room if they want the full versions of Modern Warfare slash Warzone and Black Ops Cold War with all modes and packs installed. Should you have both games installed and have kept up to date with updates, you may need to delete some unused game content to have a successful download and install the latest Warzone patch. It goes into talking about it. So this isn't a thing limited to the PlayStation 5 by any stretch of the imagination, but it is also 
the realities of where gaming are and where I think people have been so anti-digital for so long because it is how long a download's going to take, how long an upload would take, uh, having to move things around like this when it used to be you just pull them off the shelf and put them in. Yeah, with Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, Integrated coming out soon, like that's also going to be a game that is going to be huge in file size for the PS5. Yep. And when more, with with more and more bigger games coming out, they gotta they gotta rush this. They gotta they gotta be working on this actively. And like summer is for me, summer is the latest that this can come out. If it, if this goes past past summer and we still have no option uh, for increasing the size of our storage, then I think there's a problem. It's the usual thing too. Of I'm always amazed, you know, as somebody who's just fucking old. Every time I go back and think about what it was, the PlayStation Three at launch, the PlayStation Four at launch, and you think about all the quality of life stuff we assume with or we recognize with those units, and then you go back and look at re- articles or see the when they launched actual features that you think about every day with those things. Like this always happens where stuff comes later, and I think you know it's one of those things we're bitching about now. And we will continue to bitch about till there's a solution, and then the bitching will ch- turn to how expensive this is because I'm sure these SSDs oh, will be yeah. cheap, and of course it'll be one or two that can actually do what they want it to do, and there'll be a whole different argument for it. But it'll eventually be a moot point. But right now it's just an annoy an annoyance, I guess. Yeah. Number two on the Roper Report, let's have some sad news, but it's tinged with a whole bunch of different things going on. Uh, PlayStation's Japan studio is being reorganized. This is Matt TM Kim over at IGN.com. Uh, we're going to start with his article before the update. I went in, paired some stuff out of it, but here we go. According to sources, VGC is reporting that a vast majority of Japan studio's developers have been laid off after their annual contracts weren't renewed. What remains at the studio are the localization and business staff, as well as Asobi Team, the developer of the Astrobot series. Asobi will reportedly continue to make games as a standalone studio. Sources tell VGC that Japan's studio has just not been profitable enough, and there were disagreements over the direction of the studio. Japan's studio wanted to create games for Jap- the Japanese market first with global appeal, while PlayStation reportedly wanted Japan's studio to work on global hits similar to North American and European first-party teams. There's been a string of high-profile departures from Sony's Tokyo-based studio in the past couple of years. Kenichiro uh, Toyama, uh, the director of Silent Hill and Gravity Rush, left Japan studio in 2020 along with Gravity Rush designers to form Boken Studios or Boken Game Studio. Uh, And just the other day, Bloodborne producer uh, Masaaki uh, Yamagami, Yamagiwa, Uh, also announced on Twitter that he left the Japan studio, though he says he intends to remain in the games industry. Uh, Then that was the original part talking about this all happening. Of course, Japan studio, if you're not familiar with PlayStation, think of all the quirky Japanese games that PlayStation put out, right? You're talking about Ape Escape. You're talking about Gravity Rush. You're talking about them working with Pyramid on Patapon. Like, this is a storied studio, obviously, with a long laundry list of games to go into. Before then, though, that's the original story off of VGC. You know, I usually like to go to the uh, source of an article. Uh, The reason I'm using Matt is that Matt got this then that I was originally starting this with. SIE has confirmed that PlayStation Studios Japan Studio will be reorganized following reports that game development at the first party developer will be scaled back. In a statement to IGN, Sony announced that Japan Studio will be, quote, recentered around Team Asobi, the development unit behind Astro's Playroom. Localization, IP management, and external production will also be concentrated within the global functions wing of PlayStation Studios. Sony launched PlayStation Studios as a new umbrella brand that houses the company's first-party game developers, including Sony Santa Monica, Naughty Dog, Sucker Punch, Insomniac, and more, effectively shipping parts, shifting parts of Japan's studio's assets uh, to the global brand. Here's the full statement from Japan Studio below. In an effort to further strengthen business operations, SIE can confirm PlayStation Studios Japan Studio will be reorganized into a new organization on April 1st. Japan Studio will be recentered to Team Asobi, the creative team behind Astro's Playroom, allowing the team to focus on a single vision and build on the popularity of Astro's Playroom. In addition, the roles for of external production, software localization, and IP management of Japan Studio titles will be concentrated within the global functions of PlayStation Studios. So, it's a a little from column A, a little from column B, where Japan Studio, as we know it, is dying and going away. Team Asobi is safe, but the studio that was behind stuff like Parappa the Rappa, you know what I mean? Behind Ape Escape, behind Patapon, Loco Roco, right? The list goes on. And you can just, if you go to the Wikipedia page and go through it, right? Now, a lot of these are developed with, they're helping people out, right? They're doing different things. Um, So many different games that 
I think defined PlayStation in you know my years of coverage to look back at it right to th- even if you want to talk about knack right like to talk about games that knack were baby. the PlayStation weird stuff that they did now going to this different way blessing what is your initial reaction I I'm, I'm kind of sad about this mainly for that reason that they were kind of the studio that worked on the weird quirky Japanese stuff and I think Japan Studio added so much personality to PlayStation in that way, where you look at that list of first-party developers, and you're like, cool, Naughty Dog, Last of Us, we love it, Ghost of Tsushima uh, from Sucker Punch, we love it, right? You go, you can go through the list, and you're like, cool, PlayStation first party has an identity. I think Japan Studio did a lot, though, in terms of shaking up that, ident- that identity, and when you look through the list of games uh, that they worked on, especially the games that they've partnered on, because they did a lot of third-party partnership in working with other developers to to put out first-party titles, that that list of games they've worked on runs super deep. I think where the stars make sense is when you start to look at games that they've worked on themselves, and, and, and what Japan's, Japan Studio is solely uh, responsible for, then you do get into things like Local Roco remastered and knack and stuff that doesn't make as big of a splash but sure when you do look at their partnership stuff right like they worked with blue point on demon souls they worked uh on with clap hand studio on everybody's golf they worked uh 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 who am I? Uh, they worked with uh the studio that i love so much team eco with on the team eco games right gen design yeah. with the last guardian and these are all games that i think add so much personality and liveliness to the playstation uh uh library that said in the article, they mentioned that it seems like localization, localization, IP management, and external production will also be concentrated within the global function uh, functions wing of PlayStation Studios, which means that those roles, I don't, those roles don't disappear. Like we're still going to see those partnerships happen without Japan Studio. I would hope. Right. I think that's what that points to, and I would hope that's what that points to because I want to see those partnerships uh, continue. Um, I think the thing that I'm happy about in the story is that. Team Asobi is still going to be around. It seems like they're going to have a bigger focus working as their own entity, which is exciting. So my take on this is that, it, especially as somebody who's been a student of PlayStation for so long, this is sad to see this brand fall away. Japan Studio, you know it well. There's so many of my favorite games have started with that logo on it, right? Yep. It's a sad thing to see it go, but I do not think it's as bad as it seems. I want to get into. I'm going to bring in Nathan Choquette's long question that I pared down, but I like everything you put in here, Nathan. My question is in regards, and he's talking obviously about this, but my question is in regards to a statement made in the past by Jim Ryan about Sony's globalization efforts in 2019. He stated that we shouldn't expect its worldwide studios to create games designed for specific territories going forward. Putting this genuine putting the genuineness of this statement aside, do you guys think PlayStation actually has to worry about this type of problem when they have such a large swath of successful first party games at the moment? With all the heavy hitting games coming out of studios like Naughty Dog, Insomniac, Gorilla, etc., why can't Sony afford to keep letting Japan Studio make games that may be a bit more enticing for the Japanese audience and maybe see success on a smaller scale in the West? Clearly, Sony hasn't had a problem letting Media Molecule p- Letting Media Molecule pursue their vision of dreams, which hasn't seemed to have gained extremely widespread popularity, even though it was critically well received. Does legacy really not mean anything anymore in the gaming industry? That seems to be pushing more towards pleasing Western and European audiences. Nathan's question has so many great jumping off uh, points for this thing. So... Part of this is, does you know, legacy not have any mean anything in the gaming industry? I wouldn't say it doesn't mean anything, but I do think it means less than ever. And I think part of that is having to look at this as a business, which sucks to say, but stick with me. Let's start with Sony Santa Monica. As you all remember, hopefully, Sony Santa Monica, of course, God of War, big games, yada, yada, yada. But they also had an incub- incub- incubation unit where they were doing the stuff with uh, What Remains of Edith Finch, where they were doing uh, uh, everything with that team, Giant Sparrow. They were working on gun. They were helping out Guns Up. They were helping out Kill Strain. They were doing all these little projects there. Then layoffs came. That got removed because that wasn't core to what Sony Santa Monica was. Now, you might say... Oh my God, so horrible. Remember, even by the time they killed that, most of the brain trust and then the rest that was still there went and did a little thing called Annapurna. That's where Deb Mars went. That's where all those creative minds went. That's where those games went, right? They got picked up and got moved over and are doing amazing work putting out all sorts of crazy experiences. And what I would say there was, what you're looking at from the PlayStation Studios, PlayStation is a brand thing, is 
paring away what doesn't make money but also isn't worth your limited bandwidth. What, not, what, what isn't worth becoming a bloated company. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I'm telling you why they're doing it, right? They are seeing their consoles fucking crush and they're seeing their games fucking crush, right? They're big games. So you say here like, oh man, like, you know, why let them, do they not want to do this? Do they want to see a smaller scale? It's similar to when EA, remember famously, when Peter Moore came on a kind of funny stage and he was like, listen, FIFA makes the money so we can spend money on an unravel that doesn't make money. I think what you're seeing here is just resources industry-wide shift where it's like, okay, cool. Sony's getting away from this, but as we just talked about in Matt's article, how many of the people that made Japan Studio, Japan Studio, have already left to go start their own thing, right? I remember uh, hearing about uh, when they went off to start the other studio that I I know I mispronounced the name of as well when I did it. Uh, Boken, Boke, Boke? Okay. Okay, Bokeh Game Studio. That was a big news. That was a big thing. And guess what? Those games will come to PlayStation. Now be PlayStation, right? And let's go to Japan. You go in there and you see a, a brand that has a legacy, that has an identity that will never be taken away. But on their Wikipedia page, let's look at their last... Let's go all the way back to the last game that they are credited as the sole developer on, on Wikipedia, right? We're starting with Demon Souls they helped out with. Patapunt uh, 2 Remastered they helped out on. Everybody's Golf VR they helped out on. Uh, D-Rant-C they helped out on. Shadow of the Colossus they helped on. Last Guardian VR demo they helped on. And finally we get to Loco Roco 2 Remastered, which was their first game, uh, it, it, it going backwards that they were the sole developer on, right? From there, it's No, no Heroes Allowed VR they helped on. Knack 2, sole thing they did on their own. Before that, let's just, just get out of all the other stuff they're helping on. Then you have Loco Mo Roco Remastered. And then we go all the way to 2013, where it was Knack. Then we're into Puppeteer in 2013, a game they should have done more with, and yada, yada, yada. And you start to see, we're talking about, the last time I think you saw Sony, uh, Japan, PlayStation's, Japan Studio B, PlayStation's, Japan Studio, is 2013. That's when Knack is Puppeteer. And before that, it was Paint Park on Vita. And uh, I've got to go even further than that. Echo Chrome 2 in 2010. Uh, Ape Escape Move, or PlayStation Move, Ape Escape in 2010. Like, we are talking about a legacy. We are holding on to a brand and all these memories we have for it that I don't think it has been in a long time. It has been a studio that, yes, helps these people get their games. But guess what? You are going to continue to get everybody's golf games because that's Clap Hands. And now Clap Hands will work with PlayStation Studios, this big brand they've built. I think the people, honestly, it sounds to me, like the people who were working there, who were the creatives, who wanted to make these games, it sounds like PlayStation had their boot on their neck of, you're not really making new stuff. We need you to help get these other games out. And they have these crazy ideas. They're not even crazy. They have these ideas for games that PlayStation's like, that's a good idea, but we need your help on Demon's Souls. We need your help on everybody's Golf VR. We need you working on those rather than making that. And so now, if everything works out, and I guess not even everything works out, if you're PlayStation, now you get the best of both worlds. You have internal at PlayStation Studios, the people who are still going to help these developers get their games out, right, that are coming in and need this thing. But all those people who wanted to go make games, guess what? They're going to go make games. And guess where those games are going to go? Probably Steam and PlayStation, especially if we're talking about Japan, right? Like Xbox has done better in Japan, but it is not by any means caught up to PlayStation. Switch, different story and how they're doing and all that stuff. Where that's come along. But those games will inevitably end up on PlayStation because of install bases, because of whatever. Like, I feel like we're mourning a brand that hasn't been the brand that we think it is in a long time. And these people getting out to go create their own studios, go do their own things, will inevitably mean those games are going to come to PlayStation. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. I think to the question, right, where you mentioned uh, legacy, I think that legacy exists to us because we're so used to seeing Japan Studio Studios logo pop up at the be beginning of games. But yeah, most of the games that, that that logo pops up in are games that they've partnered in development with, not games that they've developed yeah. solely. And I I still do believe that PlayStation will probably still partner with Clap Hands on what are the next everybody's golfers, right? Yeah. And like PlayStation will partner with with blue point it was on whatever the next blue point none of that probably. changes it gets more exactly. interesting when you talk about the people who are leaving japan studio who want to make a game that hey i want to make a game that is for the japanese audience that then will go global will they partner with playstation or will they partner with switch and then you start getting into well what kind of game are they making if it's an indie game you assume it's gonna be small enough that it can run on both no problem who's offering the better deal where does playstation want to be and again I think it becomes that, okay, cool, we're, we're doing this with Japan and or we're doing this with Nintendo in Japan because we want to be part of that huge Switch install base. Eventually, you're going to say, well, if we do, if they legit, if they're literally saying we want to go global with it, 
you're going to have to then look at PlayStation, put it out there. If you just want to stay in J Japan and have this game that breaks out there and does that, fine. That's not what PlayStation's worried about. That's why they're letting these people go and why they're not doing this. Yeah. Rest in peace, Japan Studio. Like, I, totally. Yeah, like, this is sad news because I think with us, there's legacy. With us, there's memories and all this stuff and, and all this different stuff. Um, but yeah, like on a business side, I'm with you, Greg. That I, I totally get it for all for all the reasons you mentioned. And then also, uh, rest in peace to a, to a studio we've like known for so long, and that's probably meant so so much to many people who are watching. Uh, real quick, too. Uh, I have one other question before we get out of here, but uh, uh, oh. Aogami Zephyr says, Greg is mistaken on something so obvious. If Japan Studio wasn't making their own games, it's because Sony wasn't letting them, not because they chose to sit on their hands. No, I thought I made that point. I'm sorry if I garbled it somewhere in there. Blessing, that makes sense to you? I'm saying the creative minds that were at Sony or Japan Studio probably wanted to make their games, and PlayStation wasn't allowing them. So now they've left yeah. there to make their own games and do that. Did that, was that yeah. clear to you, Bless? Okay. No, I got that. Okay, good. Uh, one question here then comes from the Sheep Whisperer. With Japan Studio being downsized and recentered on Team Asobi, do you think that we will get a version of Astro that is more game focused and less tech demo y? I, really? The, the deep it, breath? You don't think this is a slam dunk? Of course we are? No, the main reason though is because of PSVR 2. PSVR 2 has to launch with an Astro Bot, right? Like, that's what we have to expect. It doesn't have because to. Because why. Oh, it has to. I, I I mentioned this on Twitter, and like I uh, got a few people responding, be, uh, being like, "Well, Astrobot did so well. Like, why not turn it into its own game?" And my answer would be because it did so well, right? Like, Astrobot, uh, um, what was it called? Astro's Playroom killed as a PlayStation launch title. Tech, tech, uh, uh, demoing that new tech, demoing the dual, the dual sense and what the PS5 can do. If that's so successful doing that for the PS5, that is going to be successful doing that for PSVR too. Right. Like I at this point, I, I'm kind of I, I, I wish, you know, I, I, I would hope that they make an Astrobot game that is solely, hey, this is a seven to ten hour experience, full fledged. You're going through different levels, your platforming, thing, yeah. doing all that thing. I would love that. But I don't think that's what Astrobot is to PlayStation. I think PlayStation sees so much value on um, what Astrobot did first for PlayStation VR and then again for uh, for PlayStation 5. Granted, for PSVR 2, I think Astrobot's Rescue Mission 2 or whatever they call it. Will still feel like a full game because Astro's Astrobot Rescue Mission One for PSVR felt like a full game, even though it was doing like a lot of that tech demo movie stuff. But I don't think this then points to an Astro game being put out on PS5 a few years down the line and being a full fledged experience. See, my thing is, I think you get both. I think you get the full fledged game that is an Astrobot platformer. We've heard the, how, we we know how great it is. We know that there's this audience now because of it on PlayStation Five, and then I do think you get an Astro's VR or whatever the hell it'll be to I hope get so. your entry point there. But I I think if we're talking about what Sony's doing here, right, that they are trying to just keep the core business. They are trying to keep the big games that have an audience audience and can make money and move units i think astro's there i think astro's next game needs to be a it is an astrobot pl platformer and it is you know you're just playing with a controller you're having a good time and i think people will lose their so. mind because that's what i wanted out of um or that's what when they when they brought Pla astro's playroom to ps5 right and it was going to be this big hit right that was my big hope was that this would then spawn this would then create enough fervor and enough passion around, about uh, Astrobot for the entire PlayStation audience that then they can put out an Astrobot game full-fledged on PS5 and people show up and buy it and it actually sells because they built in that audience. Um, but I, I've, I've learned from directs and all this and all these different things that have happened over the last week or so that I need to temper my expectations for things. And sure. so sure. I'm, I'm, I'm choosing to be a little bit cynical with this one okay. and be like, well, cool, it's just going to be a tech demo. I'm not going to expect more. If they surprise me, dope. You know, I get surprised and I'm excited, but I, I can't hope anymore, Greg. <laughs> you made your heart broken too many times. I, I, I understand. Welcome to being a DC uh, cinematic film fan. Uh, we have more to talk about. Lots of things, lots of hopes, lots of games to talk about. But before then, let me remind you of patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Of course, you can go there to be part of the show each and every day with your questions comments on the day's news of course over there you can get the post show we do each and every weekday and of course over on patreon.com slash kind of funny games you can get the show ad free speaking of ads greg way you're not on patreon so let me tell you about our sponsors today we're brought to you by brooklyn and 
Life is too short to sleep between anything less than really nice sheets. But maybe you looked at some retailers and calculated the years of interest you'd pay on just one set and gave up. Trust me, go check out Brooklinen. Brooklinen was started by Rich and Vicky, who also tried to find beautiful home essentials that didn't cost an arm and a leg. And when they couldn't, they found Brooklinen as the first direct, or they founded Brooklinen as the first direct to consumer betting company. They work directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without the luxury level markups. Brooklinen has a variety of sheets, colors, patterns, and materials to fit your needs and tastes. Brooklinen has over 50,000 five-star reviews and counting. They are so confident you will love their products. They offer 365 days of a money-back guarantee. And Brooklinen is so much more than sheets. They've got comforters, pillows, towels, even loungewear. You know Kind of Funny loves Brooklinen. Tim loves the sheets. I also love the sheets, but I also love the towels because I'm a bigger Brooklinen fan than Tim. Take it to the bank. Go to brooklinen.com and use the promo code KFGD to get $25 off when you spend $100 or more, plus free shipping. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Enter the promo code KFGD to get $25 off when you spend $100 or more, plus free shipping. Brooklinen.com. Use the promo code KFGD at checkout. Our next sponsor is Burrow. Finding new furniture is always a hassle, whether it's finding what's right, getting it delivered, or the setup itself. That's why we're excited to tell you the show is supported by Burrow, the first furniture company that's designing smarter, simpler things for modern life at home. They built the company from the ground up to fix all the ways that shopping for furniture is frustrating. Every decision they make, from the first sketch of a new couch to the fast free delivery promise, is made with your experience in mind. No more visits to far-flung warehouse stores, no high-pressure salespeople. Plus, Burrow's world-class support team is available for you whenever you need. It's furniture designed for the way you live. The credenzas are actually tall enough to fit next-gen consoles standing vertically, and the award-winning Nomad sofa has a built-in USB charger. Assemble the simple. Oh, I'm sorry. Assembly is simple. Burrow customers literally write reviews applauding the instructions for being so easy to follow. Modular design means they're easy to set up, but they also are easy to take with you to your next home. Burrow is also fast and free with its uh, shipping on every order. Burrow saves you an average of $100 or more on large items like a couch. Right now, you can get $75 off your first order at burrow.com slash games. That's burrow, B-U-R-R-O-W dot com slash games for $75 off your first burrow purchase. Burrow.com slash games. Final sponsor of the day and the week is Logitech. Gaming headsets are important. Uh, you want a headset with a good mic, good sound, and a headset that feels comfortable to wear. That's what's best about the G733 wireless gaming headset from Logitech G. The G733 Lightspeed wireless gaming headset comes with 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity, front-facing dual-zone light sync RGB, blue voice mic technology, Pro G audio drivers, in multiple color ways to choose from. It also has total freedom with up to 20 meters wireless range with Lightspeed wireless. Keep playing with more than 29 hours of battery life. Play wirelessly on PlayStation 4 with stereo sound. With front-facing, dual-zone, light-sync, RGB lighting, you can personalize your headset lighting across style and comfort. Uh, the reversible suspension headband is designed for the ultimate comfort during long play sessions. Each G733 colorway has its own unique headband design. There's also the soft dual-layer memory foam that conforms to your head and contour contours around your jaw for better seal, reduced stress points, and delivers long-lasting comfort. I still need to see this one day, Blessing. Well, how is it going around my jaw? That's what I need to know, okay? Do you understand? Does anyone I understand? Under, I, I, I don't understand either, and this is what I've thought about a little bit. I've not been able to, to uh, rack my, my mind around it. I uh -huh. assume it's like a full 360 headphone, though. I want it to look like Bane. Yeah, I want to be, yeah. in, you know, maybe I'll be one of these Daft Punk people. Uh, for a limited time, Logitech G is offering our listeners express shipping at logitechg.com. Use the code kind of funny daily free ship 222 for express shipping today. That's express shipping on all Logitech G products with the promo code kind of funny daily free. Kind of funny, daily free ship 222. All one word, put it together. 222. 222. Hurry now, since after this promo, the code expires in three days. And I think the clock is now ticking. Okay. Number three on the Roper Report, Dragon Age is only single player. This is Jason Schreier at Bloomberg. Video game publisher Electronic Arts Incorporated has made a major pivot on the next game in the popular Dragon Age series, allowing developers to remove all planned multiplayer components from the game, according to people familiar with the matter. Dragon Age is a series of fantasy games from the EA-owned developer BioWare. Uh, the next Dragon Age, which doesn't yet have an official title or a release date, had previously been designed with a heavy multiplayer component set 
said the people who asked not to be named because they were not authorized to speak to the press. In recent months, it has transformed into a single-player game only after EA was stung by a recent multiplayer flop. The move is, sign is a significant shift for Redwood City, California-based EA, which in recent years has pushed almost all of its games to include online components that can be monetized following their releases. As video game budgets have grown significantly more expensive, publishers like EA have looked towards alternative revenue streams. One popular route is to fill a game with optional gear that can be purchased for small fees. Another is to continually upgate, update a game uh, with new content over time, charging players access. Chief Executive Officer Andrew Wilson called this trend, known as Games as a Service, as, quote, foundational to our future in a 2019 interview with games, or Game Daily. Biz. The diverging trajectories of two recent games changed the mind and other executives at EA, according to the people. One was Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, a single-player game released in November 2019 that won critical acclaim and outperformed EA's sales expect expectations, reaching more than 10 million players in the first four months. The second was BioWare's Anthem, a multiplayer game that was widely panned when it launched. The games showed that single-player games could still be lucrative and that BioWare, traditionally known for its single-player role-playing games, might be better off returning to its roots. A spokesperson for EA declined to comment. Blessing? We won. You know what I mean? The we won, everybody. Get Bioware back to doing what they when, do best. Just make single-player games. When you actually invest in your single-player studios, they actually make good shit, EA. There you go. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Lesson. I. This is one of those ones where I'll, where I, we, we we got to the right place here, and so I'm I'm glad that <laughs> I'm I'm glad this happened. But it, the 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 way in which it's it's phrased in the article makes me think that EA. The, the the lesson learned for EA was, oh, wait, actually, single players will make just enough money. We'll be fine with that. As opposed to, hey, if we are going to do a game as a service, let's give it the TLC it needs and deserves in order to be vibrant and live and have content, um, which is what was wrong with the Anthem. That said, this is good news. This is awesome. Uh, I like in the article they mentioned EA was stung by a recent multiplayer flop, uh, which I assume has to be FIFA Ultimate. That's a joke, it's Anthem. Yeah. Okay. Good. Nailed yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm glad they're doing that. I'm glad they're getting back. I'm glad they're in the tea leaves and everything that happened. I guess not in the tea leaves. The results. They saw what people said and wanted, and now we can move on with it. Great. Good. Go do it. Also, get a new Knights of the Old Republic single player game. That's what I want. This new story made me laugh also because I, I like I nowhere did I even think that Dragon Age was going to be a games as a service game. And so, like, when, they, when the news story came out that, oh, no, it's going to be a single-player thing, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> they dodged a bullet because people were gonna, <laughs> would have been upset if they like, announced oh, that multiplayer Dragon Age game. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, also, uh, from Jason and about EA, uh, EA has canceled Gaia. This is number four on the Roper Report. Video game publisher Electronic Arts has canceled the game that was in development at its Montreal office for nearly six years, according to people familiar with the matter. The game, codenamed Gaia, was first hinted at in 2015, but was never officially announced or given a title. Since then, EA executives have released a drip feed of information, sharing tidbits every few years on what it described as a brand new franchise. I don't recall much about this one. Yeah, are it's you, are one you of the, familiar with Gaia? Like in the most passing ways of what's going on in Montreal. If you uh the uh, sizzle reel that was at the end of EA play this year, or last year, I guess now, where it ended and then we bumped out to skate the skate announcement, in there they showed some stuff from it, just concept, you know, whatever, early stuff. It's one gotcha. of those things that's been worked on forever and now they're just done with it. So again, I'm glad EA's willing to just say, All right, we're wrong. This let's stop trying to force this, let's get rid of it. Yeah. Do you think EA is ever going to get to the place where everybody is like, fuck it, you did it, you changed, you know, you're here, you're making the great games that we all love and we're happy with EA? Do you think we're ever going to get to that point? No. I, 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 you know what I mean? Like, I think the evilness of EA is drummed up a lot. They clearly make decisions that, you know, gamers will universally tell them they don't want, but mm -hmm. they also do allow a lot of good things to get made. And so it's this weird, but I, I think that is going to be something for years. People talk about, right. About, and I think that it, it, it'll be conversations like this, even where it is. Oh, fallen order. And by the way, I hosted EA play. So if you want to say, I'm just, you know, sell out, whatever, blah, blah. I, I was saying this shit before. I was tossing out there. Of course, like, yeah, I, again, I don't give a shit and I can say whatever the fuck I want about EA. Clearly fucking putting multiplayer and dragon age was a stupid decision. Clearly Anthem was a complete boondoggle. Clearly they've been off the mark on things, but they do make games like star Wars, uh, Jedi fallen order. They do allow that to go. And so even when they have, 
have a success like that, I feel it's going to be thrown back in their face like this. And even when Dragon Age comes out and let's say everything goes right and it's a success, people are going to be like, yeah, I remember how they almost tried to fuck them over and do that? And it's like, well, I don't know if there's so much fucking them over as much as like, you know, Andrew Wilson's talking. And we're talking about PlayStation right now, you know, dropping Japan Studio and not because, of course, they 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 want to make it, people there want to make games that don't make money for PlayStation. Right. Like they're not an evil corporation for that. They're a corporation. They're trying to make money. Andrew Wilson being like, yeah, putting in, you know, the optional gear you purchase in games as a service is the foundational to our feature, future. Yeah, EA is a huge company that needs to try to keep people employed and supported. Ubisoft does it with Assassin's Creed. For the most part, they don't get too shit on because Assassin's Creed games are great. Like, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, there's been a huge brouhaha, if you haven't seen with Valhalla, that there's now more gear sets for sale than there are gear in the game for free, and there's a whole bunch of different problems with the game that haven't been fixed yet. yet. Different conversation, but I still don't think people look at Ubisoft and, and say, you're evil like EA's evil, right? And again, I'm not even saying EA isn't evil. I'm just saying they're not as evil as people make them out to be. When they're winning the year after year, worst company in the world, and there's like companies that are poisoning people in Flint, Michigan. We're not like, oh, all right, well, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, do I, you think do you think EA can ever turn it around? I mean, we're talking about like our kids will be hosting games daily and maybe then. Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't know if there if it's ever gonna be like a you know, people on the internet and fans are all like, Oh, we love EA in the in the way that they might say that about like a naughty dog or any any sort of other beloved developer or publisher. Um that well, said, yeah, I, I would th- say compared to PlayStation, right? If you're talking about like yeah, a publisher, yeah, PlayStation even Xbox. first party. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would say that I think they could turn around a lot of their uh, a lot of their games because this last generation of games for EA has been kind of a, a downer when you look at a lot of the releases. I f- what immediately comes to mind comes uh, is games like Mirror's Edge Catalyst and like Battlefield Hardline and I, like if I if, if I were to pull random EA games out of my mind, I will probably come across something that I was like, eh, I didn't really love it too much. Uh, sure. And for me, the big exceptions are respawn games. Like I absolutely love respawn as a developer. And if you're telling me that EA right now is making the decision to try and cultivate more respawns and let their developers have more autonomy in the way that respawn has autonomy i think that could maybe lead to bioware getting back into the groove of things you know not i don't know if they if they necessarily can get back to the mass effect trilogy and how people felt about about bioware back then but i think they can get back to actually putting out games that people love and enjoy and if yeah. you can get bioware there if you can get dice there if you can get uh, multiple ea studios in that place where they are performing on the same level as respawn I think at the very least, that'll be a big turnaround from what we've had. Sure. But I think so many times when you get a developer that succeeds, right, it's because they were able to buck EA. They were able, you know what I mean? They were able to outfox them and do something. And when a developer fails, it's because of EA. You know, they succeed in spite of EA. They fail because of EA. And there's truth to both those, I'm sure. You know what I mean? You talk about, like, even in uh, Jason's article here of, like, oh, well, you know, Fallen Order was uh, outsold what their predictions were. Like, they, you know, didn't believe in Fallen Order to that extent. So, like, what you need is more, what you need is more uh, developers coming out and saying, hey, like, they did this and they got the fuck out of our way. Which is what, you know, to uh, their credit, um, Hazelight. Uh, Joseph Ferris, right? When yeah. it, when he talks on Game Awards every year, right? He do, he does the same thing we do to an extent right now, or I'm doing as I talk, right? Where he's like, yeah, yeah, and, he's, and his, people give EA shit. They've been great to me. He says that to Jeff every year, right? Like, well, because he understands that when you say EA, people are like, oh god, but you know, they're yeah, and I'm, they're and a business. I'm, I'm and that's and that's my thing too. Is I'm with you in terms of if we're talking about terrible companies, like I don't think EA is a terrible company when you compare them to companies in a grand scheme. I, I think they're a company that needs some work in terms of how they operate uh, and like the games they green light, how they take care of their games, how they uh, nourish their, their developers. Like I think they could do a lot better with 100%. that type of stuff. You are one hundred percent correct. Yeah, they're yeah. not like they're not an evil corporation. They're a corporation. Exactly, and I think you know it's again back to the point of will they ever be beloved again in the industry? Like obviously anything can happen, but I don't see it happening anytime soon. Like I think Ubisoft was very much on their way to being an ea where it was that annualizing your games all right blah blah, blah games of service that was a, a different conversation back then but you were annualizing and just putting shit out over and over again and then it was that vivendi came in and started looking like they were going to take over ubisoft and that's when ubisoft had to get personal and that's when you know yves really started talking that's when they started talking about initiatives that's when they started getting out in front of different stuff and being vocal about trying to be ubisoft that's when they really tried to give ubisoft a brand identity what is the brand identity of ea 
It does not have one. The brand identity of EA, if you were to shut your mind or shut your eyes, is you are thinking of Corpo from fucking Cyberpunk. You're thinking of suits. When you think of video game suits, ruining a game, trampling developers, the sterile, cold, white and black monochrome offices, you think of EA. Yeah. Whether I it's think fair of sports and monetization. When yeah. I think of EA, which right? isn't, which is not a good brand identity to, ha- to have as a video game publisher. You want to be associated 100%. with fun and exciting games and all this stuff. And EA and creativity and color and like you yeah. know any anything can happen here. Anybody can do anything here. And like no, what you get, yeah, is every year there's a Madden, every year there's a FIFA, and millions of people buy them and then complain about them, but then buy them again. And it's this ongoing cycle. And yeah, it, you know, there's stuff like Apex, but you don't think about that being an EA game. You think about that being a a success from Respawn. And it's the whole thing is, you know, if this is such an interesting conversation that could be its own games cast or whatever podcast, right? But the whole thing is public perception. And if I'm Andrew Wilson, which I would never be because you see me like I, I fucking stop shows to have conversations about a decision we just made, right? If I'm Andrew Wilson, though, in EA right now, do I give a flying fuck what you, the gamer, think about me? And the answer is fucking universally, categorically, no, I do not, you fucking jackass. Because you buy the games, and if, and if you don't, the next three people in line at GameStop buy the games, and it continues to go and flourish. Now, of course, they're making changes here because that hasn't been working out in that degree, but... You know, if I tomorrow, if like, you know, tomorrow everybody gets cleared out of EA, they're like, Greg, they left it to you in their will. You're, I'm going to be coming in and be like, fucking YouTube press conferences, right? I'm like, listen, I know a lot of dumb decisions from EA in the past. We're going to get better about it. We're going to fix it. Here's what I'm doing X, Y, and Z, blah, 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 blah. But like, it wouldn't go that way. That's that's how I would do it. It's not how anybody else there would do it. You know what I mean? Like EA doesn't have a personality, and I don't think they have a vision for what their personality is. I think they want to get let their games speak for themselves, which you could argue works. Apex speaks for itself. Jedi Fallen Order spoke for itself. Like, you know, again, it, you know, the flip of this of me being uh, the last two years host of EA Play, right, was very much like, hey, come in and I was like, cool, I'm going to be myself and I'm going to want to do this and I'm going to want to make these weird jokes. Like, yeah, fine, we don't care. Like, we're trying to, literally, like, we're trying to let the game speak for themselves. That's why they switched those over to just have the developers come out and show their games and talk about their games because nobody wants to fucking have Andrew Wilson talk to them. Nobody can, no, nobody knows who this guy is. He just looks like every other Silicon Valley guy with a open shirt and a, and a jacket on. And, but, and that's... All right, again, if you're playing Apex and you're putting money into Apex and you don't think Apex is an EA game or you think it's the exception to the rule, great. You bought Fallen Order and you're excited for a Fallen Order or a Jedi, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, whatever they want to call it, too. Mm-hmm. Awesome. They've I mean, succeeded. To be fair, They've you're, you're naming all Respawn games. I know. Which I, oh, people, no. People will usually like to, like, like to separate Respawn, even though they are EA. 100%. 100%. I'm, you're not wrong at all. I know what I'm doing here. And it's like, mm. these are the things and that's all what they should be doing. And they definitely want to get it back to you. It's Bioware, which means you can trust it and you can love it and you can go with it. And you would think that with Anthem dead now and a little bit of a breather, you hope that, Matt, for them, if you're EA and Bioware, you hope that, guess what, boom, Legendary Edition for Mass Effect is what kickstarts Bioware's new bright future. Let's look to the past. Let's see this awesome game we have now. Let's remind so many of you that haven't played Mass Effect. I remind you, if you've played it, introduce to you what Bioware magic is and what this game, what we used to be and what we used to stand God, I hope for. So, man. Run that'd, that be, that'd be great to live in that future. I hope we get it because I, I think there's a chance oh, dude, we can I get there really somewhat. Hope so. But yeah, I, I, this is a good change. This is a good turn that they're making here. And hopefully they actually stick to it. Hopefully this, this speaks to a bigger future for EA. Will it? I don't. You know, I don't know, but I can hope. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. It's the only thing you can do. We spent a lot of time on that. Sorry, but that was a really fun conversation that I'm sure yeah. I'll get fucking torn apart for. Uh, number five on the Roper Report. Uh, there was a state of play from PlayStation yesterday. Like I said, our recap video is, of course, up. Not even recap. Our live watch long is up. YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Uh, I'll run you through the 10 games they showed there. They showed uh, Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Uh, it's, of course, coming to PlayStation 5 on March 12th. It will be a free upgrade, of course, if you have the PlayStation 4 version. Your saves will work. They did a, another uh, look at Returnal coming out April 30th. They showed us Knockout City coming out May 21st, something Mike uh, played over on the X-Cast and talked about how much he enjoyed it. Uh, they then sewed, sh- or debuted Sifu from the developer Slow, ca- slow, slow Clap. This is coming in 2021. It is hot. 
This is the game. If you haven't already seen this trailer, go hit up sifugame.com, uh, S-I-F-U. Go look at it there. It's this they, what are they, featuring a gripping intensity of classic kung fu films with realistic and raw combat. Sifu tells the story of a young kung fu student who has spent their life training for a day of reckoning after their brutal murder or their brutal murder of their entire family by mysterious assassination squad. It goes. Time is a currency in it. You're getting older when you die. It looks fucking awesome. Can't wait for that. Uh, they showed Solar Ash. That's coming in 2021. They showed Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach coming in 2021. They did a little bit more on Oddworld so- Soulstorm, which finally has a date. April 6th, uh, the PlayStation version will be free on PlayStation Plus. They showed finally some more Kena Bridge of Spirits. That's yeah. coming August 24th, 2021. Showed Deathloop, a new trailer for that with a hot song, coming May 21st, of course. And then the big finale was Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade. This is the PlayStation 5 version of the game coming June 10th. There will be a uh, New episode featuring uh, Yuffie. Yeah, right. Yuffie, 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 Yuffie. One there's gonna be a photo mode. There's gonna be shorter load times, and it's a if you have it's a, you can take your save with you from PlayStation Four, uh, and it's a free upgrade if you have the if you're a PlayStation Plus member, a free upgrade to the PS5 version. But yes. it gets co- convoluted because as Lucid Dream writes in, it says. I have a PlayStation conundrum, and I want your opinion on it. I own the disc version of Final Fantasy VII Remake on PS4, and I own a digital PS5. Now that Remake, and this is news that was going to be in Deals of the Day, is coming to PlayStation Plus next month, but is not eligible for the PlayStation 5 upgrade version if you get it through PlayStation Plus, should I avoid adding it to my library if I want to experience the PS5 enhancements and replay the game when it launches on June 10th? If I download the PS Plus version, do you think they'll have a way to potentially pay for the upgrade of the PlayStation 5 version, or would my account then be fucked with truly no upgrade path? Would I be able to purchase the normal game at all once I add the PlayStation Plus version to my library? Adding the game to my PS... This is is where we just go on into the cumbersome nature of these upgrades and stuff like this. I would... My uh, lucid dream, don't be the guinea pig is what I would say. (laughs) <laughs> I would say let it come out. PlayStation Plus it drops it next uh, on Tuesday. It'll come on t- be free on t- Tuesday. Let other people do it and let Square answer too, because uh, I think you'll get an answer from PlayStation or Square at some point yeah. about how this is going to work. It'll be up even for yesterday's a month on PS Plus. Like you know, there will be time that it'll need to yeah. be answered. Yeah, let also, somebody if else plan, do it. If you plan to actually buy it eventually, just wait to the wait and wait and buy the PS5 version because that's the version you're going to want to play anyways, right? Well, he has the PlayStation. He already bought it once on PlayStation yeah. Four. Mm. now he's talking about yeah this digital version yeah well yeah you're gonna have to buy it like yeah it's weird i wouldn't touch it i would just like if you want to play it you have it on disc play it on your ps4 on disc or play it on your ps well i guess you can't play on your ps play it on your ps4 on disc and then when you want to play the ps5 version just wait for the ps5 version to come out and buy it there since right now as of at the place you sit right now you have no way to upgrade for free for the person who's 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 riding in with the disc for with the disc version correct that's right right you can't upgrade the, the disc version to PS5. Mm. Did it say digital? digital? I thought it was just PlayStation. All the all the video said yesterday was oh, you can. free upgrade for PlayStation Plus members. And so that's all I knew and I, I stayed off of. But, okay. So okay, you can here, upgrade Here's where people version. are getting huh. confused about, though, is that uh, just insert the disc, get the upgrade, and go, don't get it. He's got a digital PS5. A PS5. That's the so fucking yeah, question. Screwed. Listen to us, chat. Listen so to us, chat. No, no, Chad yeah. just wants to listen to the parts they want to listen to. Yeah. Lucid, Lucid Dream, what I'm getting here is that you're, you're kind of screwed if you want to upgrade, yeah. unless you get a disc PS5. Yeah, you, you'll have to buy Final Fantasy VII so just, Remake Yeah, so just buy, just buy the PS5 version when that comes out, and don't mess around with the PlayStation Plus version, unless you really want to play it digitally right now. You're not going to be able to upgrade. Just don't do it. Don't do this. Don't do yourself, Lucid Dream. Don't do it. Number six on the Rupert Report, there was a Pokemon Presents today. Uh, Adam Bankers has a recap from IGN. Again, you can watch uh, Blessing, Andy, and Tim freak out to all this news. Uh, the biggest of which was Pokemon Legends. How do I say this? Arceus? Arceus. Arceus is coming in early 2022. I Adam at IGN. Right. <laughs> I whatever, who word. cares? <laughs> Tim's, a, Tim's man. They didn't sing it right. Uh, Adam at IGN writes, taking place in Pokemon Diamond and Pearls, Sinnoh region, uh, feudal past, uh, Pokemon Legends Art- Atreus is an open world take on Pokemon. <laughs> Set to be released in early 2022, Pokemon Legends Atreus features a game world that is reminiscent <laughs> of the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild with Pokemon appearing all over. Players will be creating Sinnoh's, uh, Sinnoh's uh, first Pokedex uh, and r- features Rowlet, Cinequil, and Oshawott <laughs> as starter Pokemon. Blessing, you flipped out for this, an open-world Pokemon. What did you think? 
Uh, well, right now I'm trying. I'm trying to find how to pronounce. Who RK cares? RCS. Nobody cares. Well, chat is tra- chat is divided. Uh, Warthog one five five says it's RCS. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah I'm, that's what I'm finding. People are saying RCS. Then another thing that says RCS. I'm not gonna worry about it. I think uh, it's a soft C though. It might be a soft C. Right. So I've heard it with a hard C, and so that kind of confuses me. Anyway, this is very exciting. I can't believe they announced this. I, um, we've been waiting for this kind of game for years, bless it. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is like one of those games where I, like, this is all I've wanted my yeah. whole life. Like, yeah. and, and this puts me in a, this puts me in a predicament because, as I said earlier to, to you, Greg, I yeah. don't want to hope. You know, I don't, don't, hope. don't want give me to hope. hope because looking at this trailer, this is everything I've ever wanted from an open world Pokemon game. But at the same time, you're looking at it and it's like, oh, the world seems kind of barren and like the graphically it doesn't seem to be all that amazing. And like there are, th- there are certain things I can nitpick here or there. But at the very core, this seems to be a, a new um, uh, like main line of Pokemon that is very exciting, uh, especially because this is a thing that they can iterate on and make new versions of and improve yeah, and get better because, and better. Because like they separate, they really separate the, um, like it's Pokemon Legends Arceus. So that like you imagine that the Legends title is gonna be like a series that they continue on with yes. and iterate on and shit like that. I can't believe they're doing it. I know it's wild. You can go watch those reactions. They also announced Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl games. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl will be released for Nintendo Switch in late 2021. These are remakes of the Nintendo DS's Pokemon Diamond and Pearl from two six. My Plus, there was a new trailer. It's going to look good, Greg. I'm f- so yeah. fucking excited. Let's this go. Is, uh, I, I want to shout out Tim Geddes. Tim Geddes, of course, an ARC Final Fantasy, or not Final, Final Fantasy, or not Fantasy Critic League for Gamescast. Uh, Tim has his roster being all games that are Hail Marys, and this is one of them. And so, Yeah, this was one this, of the games a, I, I uh, got to for the one in, that Dorno is running. Ah. Tim Geddes, uh, Tim it was Geddes a big risk. It was a big better. risk. I was like, I, I you gambled and it paid off. Yeah, it paid off. I'm so fucking excited. I'm and then they had a new year. trailer for Pokemon Snap introducing uh, new features, including tools, photo editing, and more. Blessing. I'm excited for stuff, but we're super late. Where would I go? Uh, the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Uh, Akuto Showdown is coming to Xbox One. Katana Kata is coming to Xbox One. Horn Knight is coming to Switch and PC. Dungeons and Bombs is coming to Xbox One. Beyond Enemy Lines Remastered Edition is Xbox One and PC. Bravely Default 2 is on Switch today. Uh, Cardiclism is on PC. Uh, Demon Hunter Revelation is on Switch. Thunder Flash is on Switch. Uh, Bow Bob's Bow Babs Mausoleum Grindhouse Edition is on Switch. Monster Truck XT Airport Derby is on Switch. Dat Game is on Switch. Rhythm Doctor is on PC and Mac. Hot Brass is on PC and Mac. Handball Manager uh, 2021 gets an update on Steam today. New dates for you. Cyanide and Happiness. Freak Apocalypse. Freak Apocalypse is launching March 11th on uh, PC and Nintendo Switch. Um, Subnautica Below Zero is getting, uh, yeah, May 14th, 2021. PC, Mac, uh, Epic Game Store, PlayStation 5, Xbox, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch. Into Dreams is coming to PS4 and Nintendo Switch on March 4th. Uh, Doodle Devil uh, 3 Evolution is co- uh, coming out March 11th on Switch, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. And then Happy Friday, DC and Epic games announced plans today to publish batman's batman slash fortnite zero point a six issue mini series that combines the dark knight and other dc superheroes with the global gaming phenomenon arriving in comic book stores and on participating digital platforms uh tuesday april 10th 2021 each print issue will include a redeemable code for bonus dc themed fortnite digital items inspired by the events in the comics starting with the rebirth harley quinn outfit Baron, I'm excited, and I will be buying those comic books to then redeem the codes and get more DC content. Cool. Deals of the day. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, Maquette, Remnant, From the Ashes, and Farpoint are your PlayStation Plus games for March. You can pick those up for free next this might Tuesday. Be like the, this might be the best PlayStation That's Plus That's a fucking month. killer. I just out there. We I don't already know, know Final Fantasy PlayStation Plus month. We already know Final Fantasy remakes great. Maquette is that uh, puzzle game that looks yep. beautiful and has Bryce Dallas Howard Me in it. Me and Kevin are very excited for that one. Uh, Remnant from the Ashes. I have nothing to, really to say. I never really. I think I tried. People, it, but I don't people love Remnant. It's a yeah. Souls like with co op, but then shooting. People will really dig it. And then Farpoint, uh, a great PlayStation Plus game, or I'm sorry, PlayStation VR game. So go get it. That's what Farpoint is, right? Yeah, I'm right about that. It was the shooter, right? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Well, hold on a second. That's interesting. Maybe am I think was there a Farpoint and then a Farpoint VR? 
I think ooh. Farpoint sounds like something else. VR. VR I can look it up. I only know it as VR two. They yeah. eventually have it where you didn't have to do it as VR anymore. I guess so. Because yeah, I, saying, I, remember, yeah, I played it from, with the aim controller. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying now do you have to play it? Is it? Is, is it only VR? It? Yeah, that's my thing. Do they uh, do they have a different thing? Is, uh, people are saying VR only. So okay, just, cool. Hey man, I'm down for it. I was just wondering. That's oh, I see. What? No, I don't really. I guess. <laughs> oh, that's my confusion. All right, yeah, that makes perfect sense then, because then you have one PlayStation Five game, three PlayStation Four games. One of them can be VR, and I don't think you're pissing as many people off. I yeah, apologize, yeah. everybody. It's just me, a PlayStation VR fan. I'm like, they can't be giving you a PlayStation VR that, game, that and nobody's pissed, seem right? <laughs> also, Destruction All Stars still free. Also, Ratchet is free with Play at Home, so it's Woo-hoo. a baller month if you if you have PS Plus and you want to play some PlayStation games. Uh, we ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash games to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. Uh, let's see what we got in here. An antibiologist says uh, bouquet is pronounced like bouquet. Uh, bouquet. Bouquet. Like a bouquet of flowers. Bouquet. Bouquet, Greg. That's bouquet. Nice. Bouquet. Bouquet. Okay. Uh, oh, my God. That PR guy says it's Arceus. So it doesn't sound like arse. Arceus. Even though we really like calling it Arceus. You you, you got you gotta figure it out, Pokemon fans. I'm figure sorry. You gotta figure it out. You know what I mean? You can't be doing this. Um No, yeah, okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's your final kind of funny games daily for Friday for this week let's look ahead to what's happening next week uh monday it's going to be blessing and tim tuesday it's going to be me and gary wednesday it's going to be tim and andy thursday it's going to be me and the x casts paris lily then friday it's going to be blessing and game spots michael hyam yeah baby. excited working with your roommate very excited can we have you guys on the same camera probably not unless kevin uh, wants to come through and set us up with like i mean you just sit next to each other and you share a mic Boom. Oh, yeah, just go back and forth like this. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's content. That sounds, like that. <laughs> that sounds uh, like a struggle. No. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your final Kind of Funny Games Daily for the week. But remember, there's still so much stuff happening. Number one, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games to get the post show we're going to do. Blessing is going to ask me a question, and that's where we're going to go. So, Blessing, think of a good question. Uh, if you don't want to do that, or you're live on Twitch, or you're watching later and you want to see something cool on youtube.com slash kind of funny plays. Twitch.tv slash kind of funny games is about to have some Fortnite on it before I come back to try Outcast for the first time. Very excited about that. Uh, no, Outriders. 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 Yeah. Sorry. 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 Outriders uh, for the first time. Still very excited about it, even though I fucked up the name. I assure you, I know the name. I'm just thinking about Robert Kirkman today and all the invincible news happening. I digress. Uh, of course, then that's not the end of it. Saturday, uh, the Wild Aces go up against uh, the Zippers and FCF. Uh, come watch some football with us. Twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, 4 30 p.m. Pacific time. For now, unless you come to the post show, that's it. Goodbye. We love you. Au revoir.